All right, I want to do a video refuting this stuff right here, showing what I've been preaching for years, that there's such a thing as fake Christians, people that fake it. They just act it out. And he actually admits it, that that's what he is. He admits to have faking a belief in God. Right? You're going to hear it here. And let's continue. Um, or let's listen to this and you won't believe it. Here we go. Within a year after my dad's death, I was addicted to heroin. I was addicted for 14 years. I quit when I was 28 years old. And during that period, when I was in early recovery, is when all of these things started to make sense to me. My Catholic upbringing, all of this confluence of philosophy and theology. <laughs> confluence of theos or philosophy and theology. Okay, let's start out. <laughs> um, just read a King James Bible. Uh, nothing destroys you more than a, a uh, Roman Catholic upbringing. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, Roman Catholicism. After the rudiments of the world, Roman Catholicism. And not after Christ. All right. You get spoiled through philosophy. Right there you're seeing it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. He just said it. The traditions of men. The traditions that are added to the scriptures. You don't find any of this stuff. Where's this at in the New Testament? Where's the altar there with a special little thing on it? Where's stained glass windows? Where are church buildings? Where's Jesus continually hanging on the crucifix? Where's the church pews where people are coming and kneeling and saying repetitious prayers and things with little rosaries? Where's it at? It's not there. It's not in scripture. It's added. Let's continue. And self-examination and, and pain that you go through. Mm -hmm. we, we grow through pain. You know, pain is ultimately the touchstone of spiritual growth. And or you could say the Bible is the you know, touchstone of spiritual growth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. But, you know, pain, you get that pain, you know, kind of self-flagellation, just kind of beat yourself for a while. You could be a good Catholic that way. <laughs> why, do you, why do you defend Roman Catholicism if you're a Catholic? It's a terrible system of bondage and slavery. You need to come out of it. Let's continue. Addicts have a unique opportunity for redemption because they've been to hell. It... Uh, no, they haven't been to hell. All right, it's pretty bad when you're addicted to things, but it's not hell. You can get something to drink when you're an addict. All right, uh, there's nothing to drink in hell. Um, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. Yeah, you might have some of that if it's really bad to what you're addicted to or whatever else. But uh, there's a chance to come to the Lord for salvation. So, oh, there's a chance for redemption because you've already been to hell. Huh? So you can go and you can, if you, if you go through really bad things, then you've got a better chance at heaven. Absolute nonsense. What about Jesus dying on the cross? Shedding his blood? Oh, well, the, oh, yeah, that. Oh, yeah, you know, just kind of a side, side note, side, you know, secondary thing or something. No, it's everything. Let's continue. It destroys your life, and it destroys your relationships, and it hurts everybody that you love, and it makes you into a liar. Whenever you're living against conscience, which you're doing if you're addicted, you push God over the periphery of your horizon. So there is, there is you know, a complete disconnection. I feel like I was like a one-dimensional human being, you know, that I was a collection of appetites that needed to be fed all the time, and that becomes a full-time job. When I finally got this over, I came in, you know, with my life wrecked, and I came in on my knees, and I made the decision. I knew I needed a spiritual realignment, mm. and then I picked up this Okay, he picked up this book. Well, praise the Lord, he got a King James Bible. Isn't that wonderful? He came to the Lord finally. He didn't say he prayed. He just got on his knees and then came to a realization that he needed a spiritual realignment. Um, so he got a King James Bible. Watch this. You ready? He's going to say he went to the scriptures. The scriptures are what brings eternal life. The, the scriptures, you can be born again through the scriptures. That's what he's going to say here. Watch this. A book by Carl Jung called Synchronicity. It was a kind of synchronicity that it was sitting on a table and oh 
You can't go to the scriptures? I got something by Carl Jung. Yeah. A philosopher. When the Bible warns about being spoiled by philosophy. The reason I picked it up was because there was an album by the police that had just been released and it had the same name and I didn't know what the word was. Mm. So I picked it up out of curiosity. And synchronicity is a coincidence. It's like one of those things that happens to all of us when we, when we start noticing them, it happens more often. An example would be you're talking about somebody who you haven't seen or thought about in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the phone rings and it's that person on the phone. And these little things happen to us all the time, right? And Young saw those as interventions by God who would reach through the universe and break all of his own rules, the rules of... Uh, God breaks all of his own rules? What about God cannot lie? Why would God use a lost philosopher to bring a man to him? You know, I'm saying, you know, huh? No. <laughs> if you're listening to this lie, Robert Kennedy Jr., he'll lead you straight to hell. That's where he's going. Why? Because he rejects the book. The greatest book of all time. Not my opinion. The greatest book of all time. Google it. You'll see it's the Bible. Not Carl Jung's book on synchronicity. It's insanity. Mathematics, okay. arithmetic, and percentages of chance and of time and space would reach through and do these little things to touch us on the shoulder and kind of say, you know, I'm here. You're looking at a miracle. And Jung was a deeply spiritual. You're looking at a miracle because somebody you haven't talked to in 20 years calls you on your cell phone? <laughs> a deeply spiritual man. Yeah, he's involved with devils. <sighs> spiritual man. Young began having these very authentic spiritual experiences when he was a kid. And he remembers the dreams that he had. And these synchronicities are their authentic spiritual experiences. Yeah, that looks like a spiritual thing that leads you to the Lord. What's that, a multi-footed dragon and and its feet are falling off and there's blood coming out? And this guy's there, you know, stabbing it? Well, that I, that's, I think, in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think. <laughs> okay, here we go. That kind of guided his life in this extraordinary way. What he says is that I can't use empirical tools and scientific tools to prove the existence of a God. But uh, I can. I mean, faith, yeah, the just shall live by faith, absolutely. But, you know, I studied manuscript evidence for 24 years. Textual criticism. I have the Alexandrian type texts over here, Nestle Oland, 27th and 28th edition, 25th edition. I have the Texas Receptus. The Ben Shaim uh, Hebrew Masoretic. I have the Hodges and Farstad uh, majority text. I have uh, Catholic catechisms. I have all different types of Bible versions. I have Bibles up here that are nearly 200 years old. Uh, empirical tools, scientific tools. Oh, sure, there's plenty of them. I can prove that the King James Bible is the best Bible that's ever been written. The greatest of all Bibles, including the original autographs. I can prove that. Uh, the original autographs just faded away. Uh, people didn't care about them in the first century, and, and there was never, there's never been a, a total Bible, Genesis to Revelation, that included all of the original autographs. So don't worship that as if it's some kind of a holy, holy thing. It isn't. Okay, Timothy, Paul writes to Timothy, and he says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Um, he calls copies holy scriptures. So don't get messed up by this, you know, whole Greek. Hebrew thing and you have to go back to the Greek and the Hebrew and all that stuff uh, the greatest book ever I'm holding it in my hands the King James Bible again I can prove that no book in history has been published as much as this book no book in history has caused as many uh, changes and things in people's lives as this book right here so you just have to go to God with experience oh it's so it's a Gnostic thing it's your knowledge you see it's a matter of enlightenment. That's why you play the music in the background. And you have the lights and, the, and things. Oh, I'm coming through to God through enlightenment. Oh, this is the, the answer I'm looking for. Huh? Or you can just go down to a dollar store and get a King James Bible. Or order one online. Be better. They're nicer quality. 
Now, it's not that difficult to find. But these guys have to make it so difficult in this deep, profound thing. How I came through this thing. And, oh, I just had this amazing experience. Oh, because that way it makes it seem like they're on a different level than you are. And you have to have the same kind of a oh, experience. Self-righteous devils. Let's continue. That I can prove that having seen tens of thousands of patients come through his hospital, that people who believe in God get better faster and that their recovery is more durable mm -hmm. and enduring. Mm -hmm. And for me, reading that was much more impactful than if he had said that he had proven the existence of a God, which I would not have believed. Right. What he was saying was, it's irrelevant if there's a God up there or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's irrelevant if there's a God up there or not. Uh, yeah, but I, I see people that have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and I want that. Hmm, you know, Simon the Sorcerer, give me this power. How much money can I pay you? Well, I'd like to also have this gift of being able to lay hands on people and they get the Holy Ghost. You know, what's it worth? I'd, I'd like to pay for that. The modern day Simon the Sorcerer. If you believe in one, your chances of living a healthier life and of recovery are better, and it's an easier path. And at that point in my life, I had made a vow that I would do anything, anything at all, if it increased my chance of recovery by even 1%. Mm -hmm. But I made a decision, I'm going to start believing in God, because it's, it's going to improve my chance of recovery. And then I, I'm confronted with the dilemma of how do you start believing in something that you can't see or smell or touch or taste or hear? Uh, 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 uh. I have to correct you there, Mr. Kennedy, because in your religious system, once the host is consecrated and he does his hocus pocus, you know, ceremony, you can not only touch Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, you can actually eat him and drink his blood. Eucharist, transubstantiation, study your catechism a little bit harder there. Okay, so yes, you can taste and 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 see God and touch God and everything else. It's a cookie. Yeah. Or acquire with your senses. And Young solves that problem by saying, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Young. Jung. And Young solves that problem by saying, fake it till you make it. Isn't that amazing? He admits it. Fake it till you make it. I've been saying that as an insult with modern Christians and modern professing, you know, church going, churchianity people. They fake it till they make it. He just said that that's what he does. And I guarantee you, he could go into some modern church someplace and sit up there and say, God changed my life. And, that, and the day I gave my life over to God, and he came and he and I see God in so many things. I see miracles all around me. And the people be going, Praise the Lord, he's a Christian. <laughs> and he just admitted he fakes it. I, I play these videos. I want you to understand something. I play these videos for you, my viewers out there, to, to make you understand. I might look like I'm a nut sometimes. I might seem awfully radical and whatever else. And some of the things I say seem really off the wall. Uh, but a lot of it's based in reality, okay? And as you get older as a Christian, you'll start to see the things that I've said, the, the really nutty things that you think, oh, Dunlinger, he's a little bit crazy and hit. You'll see it eventually. You'll see it for a while. You're seeing one of them right here. Let's continue. Act as if, and he said, the face will precede the evidence, that there will be evidence that will be overwhelming. I immediately, while I was reading this book, I said, okay, this is the answer. So I'm just going to start pretending there's a God up there, that he's looking at me all the time, and that life is kind of a test, and that, you know, we're supposed to do the right thing, and, and I'm supposed uh, to... We're supposed to do the right thing. Works. You see? I'm going to fake it till I make it. I'm going to pretend that there is a God, and I'm going to try to do my best and do good things and whatever... It should work out. I'll, I'll live a better life that way. You know, and, you know, from a lost perspective, yes, you will. Absolutely. You live as an atheist. Well, what's the point of being any you know, moral at all? You'd be better off being self-righteous. That's true. 
I will agree to that point. But the whole situation is, it's not what the Bible teaches. You see, you can pretend to know God, but the real question is, does Jesus Christ know you? To behave myself even when I don't have an audience, or even when nobody's watching me. The day I finished that book, I went out on a volleyball field, I was playing volleyball, and somebody hit the ball on a very, very powerful punch, it went way up, and then it came down and hit the top of the post. And it made this errant flight back up again. And as it was relaunching, I said, so that everybody on the field heard me, I said, that ball is going to get hit by a Mack truck. I don't know why I said that. I have no idea, but everybody heard me say it. And the ball went up and landed on a chain link fence. And then it bounced on the other side and it rolled down about 40 yards into a main thoroughfare. And this giant... Stop. 18 wheel diesel came by and popped it with just a resounding pop. And everybody looked at me for a second or like, wow, how'd you do that? Oh, at that point, I, I had just finished this book about synchronicity. And I was like, okay, I can either just dismiss that the way that I would. Mm -hmm. It's a weird coincidence. Mm -hmm. Or I can just say that, you know, this is... You know, this is God's way of talking to me, and I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to accept the beauty of it. Yeah, you know, I completely, I mean, wow, jalapeno, uh, praise the uh, you know, wow, what a miracle. God popped a volleyball with an 18-wheeler's tire. Whew, I'm convinced. <laughs> it, it, and it's not even, see, here's, again, Brother Brian, you're not being so sarcastic. Get a King James Bible and read it. The man's a brilliant man. I won't, you know, discredit that. He's very smart. Just get a King James Bible and read it. Read it for yourself. Go to the book of John. Go to the book of Romans. Hmm. Reading through here and I don't see it. The word Pope. And I don't see the word Catholic. And I don't see things. And Jesus died for my sins. And, and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hmm. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It read the Bible. Don't look for volleyballs getting popped by 18-wheeler tires. So, uh, but just a perfect example of what I've been preaching for so many years. So many people do exactly what he's doing. They fake it till they make it. You go to church and you get the feeling, you get the high from going to church, and you, you get the music and worship service. Oh, you know, you, you get to listen to the preachers, and the preachers tell you they, they do this thing, they play the music in the background, and everything's just so wonderful. They're not mean like I am. You know, they don't get you angry, they don't offend you. And it's just this, oh, I, uh, I'm right with God. God loves me. God loves everybody. God loves everything. God pops volleyballs with 18 wheeler tires. You know, so I just had to share that with people. I just thought that was such a, a great video there. Really touched me a certain way, uh, you know. But um, repent, you know, of this kind of wickedness. You can't find God through enlightenment. You can't find God through your reason and your logic and your whatever. You have to come to God as a broken sinner. He was broken from what he said, but instead of looking for the Lord, he went and he looked to philosophy. Spoiled by philosophy. Pretty sad. That will be it. Thank you for watching.